So a little bit ago, I posted a huge Ulta haul, the biggest Ulta haul I'd ever done. It was like 46 different items in that haul. So naturally, I did not use everything in that video. So I wanted to just film another video of me testing more drugstore products from that haul because I genuinely do plan on using and thoroughly testing each of the products to let you know what's good and what is not good. So today you're just gonna hang out, get ready with me. I'm using a full face of drugstore makeup and unlike the haul, I'm trying to get this makeup look to look really good. Like with the haul when I was testing the products, I was really just trying to test what I could, but today I want it to look good. So let's go ahead and get into it. I'm just gonna quickly throw on my sunscreen for the day. I'm also hoping today's makeup looks good because it's actually the makeup I'm gonna be wearing for the day. Sometimes I film and it's not makeup that I'm actually gonna be wearing out in public. This one, I think I might be. Okay, so to prime, I did use this in the haul, but I still want to test it out. Obviously, it takes more than one use for me to get a thorough review. So this is the Physician's Formula Butter Believe It Putty Primer. I'm testing to see if I like this better than the e.l.f. because to me, e.l.f. is queen. They have the best putty primer. So I, I'm, I'm really testing this one, okay? I'm giving it a chance, but I still think e.l.f. is better. So what I noticed about this is it has almost more of a silicone-y feel to it compared to the e.l.f. Something about it just spreads a little easier, but I feel like the trade-off is the e.l.f. feels a little bit more hydrating, whereas this one, it doesn't feel like the intended goal is hydration. It feels more so like the intended goal is actually smoothing, so it depends on your needs. Me, my skin leans a little thirsty, so I like how the e.l.f is a little bit more hydrating. Whereas this one, I do feel like makeup might run over this really nice. It leaves a very good slippery consistency, but in a good way. I liked it when I used it the first time, and I think I like it a little bit more today, but I don't know, I think my e.l.f. is a little bit more to my needs. I'm gonna go into a foundation that was super popular back in the day. This is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Matte Foundation. Hopefully I got the correct shade, Buff Bisque. I used to have this and I swore up and down I didn't like it, I didn't get the hype because I wanna say like five, six, seven years ago, this drugstore foundation was one of the most popular ones and I decluttered it years ago and I found it on a really good discount and I was like, let's see what Morgan thinks of it in 2022. So that's what we're testing out today. It hasn't upgraded to a pump yet and still smells like paint, but I know this kind of method of application is very unsanitary because it's touching your skin and then it's going back in, but whatever, it's, it's the most convenient for me right now. So I'm just gonna spread some on my face. I actually kind of like this application method, honestly. Your fingers don't get dirty this way. And I think because I ordered a couple of Morphe items, they sent along this E63 brush from Morphe. When you order from Ulta, you get all types of different gift with purchases that are super duper random. But anyways, I really like this brush. <laughs> it actually is quite nice for blending out foundation. Now with this particular brush, I'm still liking to go in with a sponge afterwards just because I feel like it gives it a more skin-like finish. The sponge is going to give a more natural appearance. It's going to get the excess product off of the skin. But using this to spread, I feel like it's super duper nice. So I'm very happy with this random free brush that I got, Morphe E63. It's really nice. The streaks it leaves behind, minimal, but I do think it leaves the foundation looking a little thick on the skin. It doesn't really push it in and that's where, for me, the sponge is gonna come in. So I have my damp beauty blender and I'm just gonna push the rest of the product into the skin and make it all kind of come together here. Honestly, this foundation looks pretty nice. It is a matte foundation, but I feel like as the day goes on, it's going to look more and more natural as my oils go through. And it looks really lightweight. It doesn't look heavy. It doesn't feel heavy. And right now, if you ask me, when Wild's a new e.l.f., remember when e.l.f. was like $1 to $3? I've been pushing it. 
I'll let them get away with it because their stuff is good. But now I feel like Wet n Wild is one of the most affordable brands at the drugstore. And this foundation is pretty good. I don't know why I didn't like it years ago. I was probably dumb and young. I don't know, but I think it looks good. We'll see how it sits and how it works with other products. But just for how I like to do my makeup, I'm going to move on to the eyebrows next. I'm trying this eyebrow pencil from CoverGirl. I really haven't tried very much ever in my life from CoverGirl, just some mascaras. So I'm excited. This looks like it's good. This is the Ultra Fine Brow Pencil. I have mine in the shade Soft Brown. I like it because the applicator looks nice and small and precise. So I think in my haul, I used the LA Girl eyebrow pencil that I purchased. Honestly, the LA Girl was really, really nice. So I'm hopeful for this one too, because the drugstore really does produce some very nice eyebrow pencils. And so far, this is good. I would say this feels a little creamier than the LA Girl, which to me is not a good thing. I kind of like mine to have a little bit of dryness to it, but it also is very, very fine, which is nice. Okay, and then I'm gonna fill in the hairs. Then we're gonna go up as we get towards the inner part of the brow. Okay, that will do for now. For eyebrow gel, I'm using also from CoverGirl, the Clean Fresh Brow Gel. So I did use this in the haul and I really, really liked it. I didn't think, you know, it had the strongest hold. It's not my favorite brow gel, but I do think it's a solid one from the drugstore. So I'm not mad at it. I like the spoolie. It gives like a good everyday level hold. It's not super intense, but it still gives enough just to keep your brows looking a bit better, a bit fuller. So I'm not mad at this. The way I would describe this, it's, it's a good brow gel. Before I get into concealer, I actually am gonna do my eyes just in case we have any fallout. I have a few options. I think I really wanna try these J-Cat Beauty eyeshadow palettes because they are literally like $8. So I'm gonna do one eye off camera and I will be back. Okay, you guys, I have to say, pleasantly surprised with this, I went with a fall thanksgiving -y neutral look with Thanksgiving coming up. I felt like doing something like that. And I'm not mad at this palette at all. It performed better than I anticipated. So I went with the Dia palette by J Cat Beauty. And when I swatched this, I thought these shimmers were weak. But let's see, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna start off with this Sydney Grace brush and we're gonna go into this cream shade right here. And I'm just going to set right underneath the brow, just like this, very simple. And then I'm using a Wayne Goss number three brush and I'm going into this orange shade right here. And this shade is pretty nice. It gives a good amount of pigment, it blends out easily. I think if you're not careful, it could potentially over blend a bit, but solid, right? Do you guys see that? That looks pretty good. I'm not mad. This is going to be our transition shade. So I definitely went for those Thanksgiving kind of colors today. I'm taking a BK Beauty Angie Hot and Flashy A504 and we're going into this matte brown. This matte brown isn't my favorite. Thank goodness it is easy to blend, but it doesn't give the most amount of pigment or depth that I wanted, so this isn't my favorite matte brown. Honestly though, for $8, I'm not mad at this palette at all. Like if you want to spend $8 on an eyeshadow palette, you can get her done with this one. So I'm placing the color there, then I'm gonna just blend that out like so. We will have to go back in with that brown later on after I get the shimmer colors on because it does kind of blend away a little bit, but that's okay because I'm gonna start off with this Morphe brush and I'm going into this shade right here. So this is one of like the true shimmers and it is very nice quality. So I'm starting it off in the center of the eyelid going kind of high and it looks really pretty. I'm sure you could get more oomph with it if you use a wet brush, but very impressed. This works like a high-end eyeshadow palette. And then I'm going into this shade. Now there's a row right here of almost kind of like flaky shades. I don't like these as much. I don't think they're as good quality. They're a little bit harder to work out and I just feel like they don't adhere to the lid 
as I would like. I can just tell that it's not the best formula. You know, you can make it work. I'm pressing it in and I'm working it out. I'm getting the chunks all blended out and it's looking better. But it takes a little bit of extra work, but it's still... I tell myself it's an $8 palette and I'm like, okay, then it's performing better than most $8 palettes that I've tried. Taking an Esam W21 brush, I'm going into this shade right here. This brings the holidays in, if you ask me, and it's a really nice formula. It's the same formula as the gold shade that we used, and I'm just going to put it out towards the brown and then I'm keeping it almost on the lower lash line like so I'm letting the gold go on top of it just like that so that you have that hint of Thanksgivingness and the holidays right here on the lid I'm gonna go back in with the gold shade right next to it no not next to it but right here and I'm gonna go back into the dark brown shade and just add that depth back in. I'm excited to use more of these shades. I went with a safe look today since I'm wearing this out, but I'm excited to play with the different colors in here because the neutral shades worked out pretty well. Next up for eyeliner, I'm gonna go ahead and use the CoverGirl Exhibitionist Lash Enhancing Liquid Eyeliner. This is unique because it has lash enhancing serum in here, which is gonna help your lashes grow apparently. Honestly, I think I really like this eyeliner. I didn't notice any smudging with it yesterday, but a lot of product comes out, so I can't talk. I need to be very careful about the application here. Do you see how black it is, though? Boom, that's a good wing. Let's see if I can actually replicate it on the other eye, though. Mm, these are some good wings. I did mess up and get a little bit of liner right there. So I'm gonna put a little bit of eyeshadow. And what I was thinking when I was applying this, my concern for this eyeshadow palette is longevity because I do feel like the vividness of the shades is already kind of disappearing. It's just, I don't know. I'm worried, I'll keep you updated, but I really like this eyeliner. I have only used it once before and I feel like it lasted a long time and I like how black it is. It's not the easiest to apply, like, I can't, you know, close my eyes and have a wing. The Tom Ford, I'm telling you, has that effect on me. This, I, I take it slow, but it's pretty easy to get a good look. I ran out of makeup wipes. One second, I need to clean up under here. The palette left minimal fallout, but I just wanted to clean up just in case. So for under eye concealer, I'm using this Juvia's Place I Am Magic Concealer. I really, really like this. I have it in a baby size and ignore the shade. It is darker than my foundation, but you're gonna pretend like you don't notice it and we'll put a lighter powder on underneath. Sorry, excuse the sun being really temperamental right now and changing. I'm just gonna put a little bit of this concealer on. It has quite a lot of coverage. I must say, I'm really, really impressed. We're just gonna blend this. You see, it leaves really full coverage, but it looks so good and I feel like the coverage of it is really impressive. I personally don't need or search out for good full coverage concealers, but if one is really nice, I'm impressed and I'm impressed. But since it is a bit on the dark side for me, I'm going to quickly set with my Maybelline Fit Me and Fairlight. This is not new. It's my all-time favorite powder, period. So, yeah. My skin's gonna look good today, so I'm just gonna use a wrapper brush and quickly just set my under eyes right now because I am gonna go in with a cream bronzer in a moment. That didn't do much lightning, but whatever, it's fine. <laughs> so I did pick up this Makeup Revolution Contour and Highlight Stick in the shade Medium because I picked up it in light and the contour shade was literally the same shade as my skin. So I actually really liked the consistency of it. So I got a new shade, but I think the shade Medium is still too light. Like the contour is not very contoury. We're gonna use it anyways. I'm gonna start off with the contour side. That's fine. It's not the perfect shade though. And then I'm also gonna put it down my nose right here. Oops. Then a little bit. I have a powder bronzer that I'm using, so I don't feel the need to go too heavy. I'm gonna go in with my Morphe E63 brush. We're gonna push this out. 
See, this blends so nice too. And it, it doesn't feel like it would blend so nice. It doesn't feel the creamiest when you apply it. But then, you know, you just buff it out with a pr item, like a tool. And look, it just works itself out. And that actually created a pretty nice contour. I get asked all the time, like, I thought contour is supposed to be, like, gray-toned. And yes, for, like, theater and stuff, and by all technicalities, if you're really trying to shape your face, gray is what mimics the shadows more. But for every day, you don't need to be so focused on that. It's more so for like film and photography or getting really literal with it, especially with like special effects makeup. Then I'm gonna use my sponge to kind of help with the nose contour. And there is a highlight side. And I'm gonna use it to brighten right here and down the center of the nose. And I think that's good for contour and highlight. So this is a new shade for me, like I said, and I'm actually quite happy with it. I think this is a great product from Makeup Revolution. It blends out easily and it really does a nice job of doing highlighting and contouring. So I am really happy with this product. This works like a high-end product. And then I do have a blush that is not the perfect match for this look, but I'm just gonna use it anyways since I haven't tried it. This is a Wet n Wild Mega Glow Makeup Stick Blush in the shade Floral Majority. I've never tried a blush version of this, but I do love the contour version, so I'm excited. I'm going in with my sponge, and I'm just going to pop it on. It's not as much pigment as I thought. I'll try and go directly on the skin afterwards. You did see I put a little bit of powder on my face, and it's going over beautifully. Okay, I think this is really high quality. This is another one that's like just as good as high end. No complaints here. Let's see when I apply it like this. And again, Wet n Wild is the new elf. So we love the price point on this. We'll see with longevity, but yeah, this is really, really nice. I am gonna give this highlight another try from Revolution. This is the Bright Light Highlighter. I didn't think I liked this. I thought it had too much pigment and covered my blush, but I wanna use my finger to apply it to see if I can get a natural gleam with it. So it does have a sponge, but I'm actually just gonna use my finger and really focus it and see if it makes a difference. I think I've used this twice and I haven't been impressed both times. It's definitely better applied like this, but it's a really subtle glow. It's very weird. Sometimes I feel like it looks really unnatural and highlighty and glittery and it covers up my blush. This time when I apply it like this is probably my favorite application with it, but it is a lot more subtle. I'm gonna build it up and I notice as I'm building it up, it's starting to cover up my blush. It's okay, I really wouldn't recommend this though. I have it so I'm definitely able to make it work, but it's not a top recommended product for me at the drugstore by any means, so yeah. Let's powder up though, cause I'm ready to use some more powder. I love powder. I have drier skin, but I feel like nothing makes the skin look smoother some powder okay so i'm gonna use this makeup revolution bronzer in the shade long weekend i really like this from the first time i tried it i was excited to use it again today i think it's a good one from the drugstore so i'm just gonna use a bk beauty 103 brush and i'm gonna set especially on the forehead where i have the cream contour and a little bit along the cheeks jawline yeah, I think that this is such a pretty highlight. It does give a little bit of a glow. There is some gold particles in here, but I don't really notice them on the face. So that's nice. In the haul, I did purchase another bronzer from Makeup Revolution and I didn't like it. So I'm going in with this Help Elf Halo Glow Setting Powder and I'm just gonna get the outskirts of my face anywhere but the under eyes. This is not a new product. I'm just using it today to set the rest of my face. Then let's make our way back to the eyeshadow. I'm not gonna play it safe. I want to actually put some green underneath. I feel like that would be fun. So I'm trying to open it. That's what is happening right here. So I'm gonna start off. I'm using an A504 from BK Beauty. We're gonna go into the orange shade. Bear with me here. I'm gonna apply it to the inner half of the lower lash line. 
like so. This is gonna match the top part of our eye look today. And then to switch it up, to try something different, I'm gonna go into the matte green right here in the outer corner of the palette. See, this makes it look even more Thanksgiving-y, right? Maybe, am I making that up? I'm actually gonna blend it in a little closer to the orange. And if it gets muddy, it's okay, because this look has brown too. Oh, that's fun. Maybe I should have just done this the whole way. I'm gonna do it the whole way. This is my different look. <laughs> this is me going outside of the box. Yeah, so I'm just, straight up covering up the orange i've decided i like the way that the green looked and it's working out really nice it's gonna look better once we do liner and lashes because i know it looks a little weird right now and then i'm gonna go into the dark brown the dark brown that's not so dark actually deepen in the outer corners and it only looks weird now because we don't have anything on the lower lash line yet, but it's going to look good. Trust the process. So what I'm actually going to do off camera is throw on some mascara and then some false lashes. And then I'm going to do an inner corner wing just to extend my eye. I'm not using any new drugstore products for that, so that's why I'm not featuring it. But when I'll be back, I'm thinking like we'll just get some normal falsies on and then do my inner corner wing and then we'll do the lips. So I will be right back. Okay, so eyeliner, lashes is done. Doesn't the eye look more pulled together? I told you it would. So I'm going to set my face with the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Natural Finish Setting Spray to kind of tie everything down. So let's spray. I need to use a fan or something. Well, while it's drying, I did already apply a lip liner because I did buy an, a lip liner from Ulta, but it was way too light, just not a good color. So I used this Revlon Color Stay lip liner in nude. I wish it was a bit more brown for the look, but it's fine. I'm gonna test a new lipstick. I didn't purchase this during the haul, but it's a new Flower Beauty lipstick that I haven't tried. It's not my favorite lipstick formula from them. This is their Perfect Pout formula. It's in the shade Blossom. It's a little deeper. I feel like it would go good with the fall vibe that we have going on right now. This has got to be good. Rare Beauty has such a good formula for lipsticks. Yeah, and it's perfect for this look. This one is a little bit more sheer, I would say. Beautiful, and what a good color. Okay, and then for lip gloss, I'm using this Essence Extreme Shine Volume lip gloss. No, I changed my mind. I'm using something else. <laughs> I'm going to use the Catrice Volumizing Extreme Lip Booster in Spicy Ginger Shot. I feel like this will go better with the eye look. So I'm just going to put this on top. It's like a lip plumper, so I can feel it tingling. It feels good. But anyways, this is the look. I cannot believe this is a full face of drugstore makeup. It looks really good. Let me take these out. I can kind of get a better idea. Here we go. Here's the look. I do think it is kind of a perfect holiday Thanksgiving makeup look. I can't believe it is all drugstore. I would say I liked everything that I used today. I love the way my eyeshadow looks. You know I'm such an eyeshadow snob, but this pulled together really well for eight bucks. That's really good. I'm worried. I feel like the mattes are gonna fade from what I could tell, but right now it's looking really nice and fresh. The eyeliner is amazing. Everything I use today is super super nice the only thing that I'm like eh about is the revolution bright light highlighter but everything looked really good worked really good if you're looking for some drugstore makeup hopefully this video helped you out I mean you can get a very high-end look with very affordable products you know I love my high-end makeup but I do not turn my nose up to affordable products because I know you can definitely find some gems so i hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful thank you so much for hanging out with me testing some more new drugstore products and i will catch you guys in the next one bye guys have a good one